Hey, YouTube family and GN subs. How are you? What's happening? Today, we're going to talk a little bit about concurrent filing of adjustment of status. Very important stuff. Give you some great tips here. Uh, what to do, when to do, how to do, why to do. What is concurrent filing of adjustment of status? So we're going to talk all about it today. For those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Umberto Gray, attorney at law here on the west side, Los Angeles, known to give you good news. That's what I do. I'm the good news guy. So give me some thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Um, you know, we also talk about really complicated subject matter. This is a complicated, could be a complicated subject matter, but I'm going to break it down, make it very simple for you. Again, what is concurrent filing of adjustment of status? And then I go through cases in my office. I give you real time stuff. You know exactly how immigration is processing cases, the time, the policy, what's going on in real time, right? They have on their website certain things. Hey, it's going to take, you know, eight months for an I-130 to be approved. No, my I-130s are coming approved these days in about four months. So anyway, that's what I do, folks. And uh, we got a lot to unpack. So let's get at it. All right. What is concurrent filing of adjustment of status? All right. So generally, you need to have a petition approved, either an I-130, an I-140, or an I-360. You need that petition approved before you file the adjustment of status, right? It's a separate petition. You have the ones I just mentioned, and then you have the I-45, right? Generally, you need the petitions approved first, then you file the I-45. Well, guess what? You can file both at the same time without the petition being approved. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of people call me and they say, hey, Umberto, you know, the petition's been pending for quite some time. Um, why is it taking so long? And I said, well, why haven't you filed the adjustment of status with it? Well, I thought I had to have the I-130 or the I-140 approved before I filed the I-485. Or I've been waiting forever for the I-360 to be approved. And I tell them, look, let's file the adjustment right now for a variety of reasons, okay? So that's called concurrent filing, right? Remember, filing the adjustment is when you want to pick up the green card here in the U.S. You cannot concurrently file petitions if you're going to consular process. It's only for adjustment of status in the U.S. You can file adjustments under 245A, under 245I, or under 245K. I talked about this before. Check out my previous videos. Um, you know, real quickly, uh, 245A, when you've been maintaining legal status in the United States and you want to change from the non-immigrant visa to the immigrant visa, 245I, when you can pay the penalty fee, the $1,000 penalty fee, uh, and 245K, if you have been technically out of status on an employment-based petition, you can still file the adjustment under 245K. So these are adjustments, right? So you can file adjustment under any of these provisions and concurrently file with the petition prior to approval. So what type of petitions can you concurrently file? I put a link in the description box below. Um, it's a USCIS website. Take you to there, check them out. You know, I mean, it's pretty simple stuff, but one thing that you need to know is that in order to concurrently file a petition, the priority date must be current. So for example, immediate relative petitions, right? There's no priority date. It's always current. So you can file those I-360, same thing. On the I-140 employment-based petitions, you must, must, must make sure that the priority date is current before you concurrently file that petition or you'll get a denial, okay? And your money will be wasted, okay? So check it out. All right, so when do you file a concurrent petition? Why would you file a concurrent petition? And when do you not file a concurrent petition? You have to take these into consideration, all right? The reasons that you would file, number one, is to maintain status. So let's say your non-immigrant status, your H1, J1, whatever, is expiring, and you need to file your adjustment, right? So normally you would just file the petition, once that's approved, then you file the adjustment. So once you've concurrently filed the petition prior to approval with the adjustment, you change your status to a, a pending immigrant, right? So you will stay in status throughout the duration of the petition pending, if that makes sense. Let's say I have a month left on my non-immigrant status, right? The employer says, hey, Umberto, I'm going to file a green card for you. I would look at it if it's current. I would say, God, I have a month left on my non-immigrant status. I mean, normally you can file an extension of that non-immigrant status, but if I want to file the adjustment to change from the non-immigrant to the immigrant status, I can file the I-485 together with the I-140 and 
I will be legal throughout the pendency of the adjustment pending. Second reason you want to file uh, is to save time, right? So let's say you file the petition first before the I-485. Petitions generally, I-130, I-140, I-360, they generally take a year to a year and a half to get approved. So if you wait that year and a half and then you file the adjustment, so you have a year and a half plus two years, three and a half years. So you can cut out the year and a half wait on the petition by filing concurrently. Another reason you want to file concurrently is retrogression. Sometimes the priority date regresses, right? So if you're at a point where your case is current, you might want to lock in that, that filing of the adjustment, right? When the adjustment is filed, you're in legal status, you get a work authorization, you get a travel permit. So some countries where there's retrogression, India, China, uh, Philippines, you might want to consider concurrent filing all the time, right? So you can lock in the priority date. So if you have the adjustment that's pending and there's retrogression, that means the priority date is not current. It doesn't matter. The adjustment continues to process, right? And you will maintain your status, work permit, travel permit throughout the pendency, even if there's retrogression. That's great. All right, why would you not want to concurrently file, okay? One reason, folks, all right? Money, okay, money. So it's 1,225 right now to file the I-485. If that petition is denied, the I-485 is gonna be denied and you lose that money. So my thing is, I would opt mostly to file concurrently, but if you have a case that's very difficult, let's say your I-360, your battered spouse case, your VAWA case is not that strong, right? I think I would wait for the approval to come. Um, you know, if you have an I-140 petition that is not so strong, there's questions whether or not it's gonna be approved, I would hold off, right? So that's my advice, that's what I tell my clients. Hey, you know what, we have a 50-50 you know, chance of getting this approved. Let's get the petition approved first before we spend the money on the adjustment. All right, so let's say you have an I-360 petition. Um, there is an I-765 where you're filing for the work permit, all right? You have two options when you concurrently file. You can opt under C-9, that's with the I-485. That's a work permit you get with the I-485, generally comes in about six months. Or you can file C-31, that's in connection with the I-360 form itself. If you file on the I-360 form, the C-31, you have to wait until the petition is approved. Even though you have the adjustment pending, it's gonna take about a year to a year and a half to get that I-360 approved. I would recommend you file under C-9. All right, so let's say you have a work permit under DACA uh, or under TPS, right? The question would be, do I concurrently file? I would say no, right? Again, the whole thing is about saving money. Generally, you want to wait until the petition is approved and then file your adjustment, okay, if you qualify. So, all right, when I concurrently file, I want to be conservative, right? Do I want to maintain my underlying non-immigrant status? Yes. I always advise my clients, look, at least let's maintain the non-immigrant status until the petition is approved. So we concurrently file petition and adjustment at least wait until the petition is approved, then I would say, no problem, it looks like you're gonna get a green card, your adjustment is pending, you're still legal, you can work and travel, no problem, no need to spend the extra money on extending the non-immigrant status. Some of my clients are very conservative. They don't care, they wanna maintain non-immigrant status at all times, they don't mind paying me the big bucks, and uh, hey, that's how it goes sometimes. Hey, thanks so much for watching Gray Law TV. Click below, like, and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up, folks. We are going into the new year, making it happen. And uh, we'll talk to you soon.